The Halo Infinite PC blog update has just been released for all of us. We have some really key information talking about crossplay, specific PC features and how they transfer over the console, and how 343 plans to balance out controller versus mouse and keyboard. So stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. So as 343 promised, they came out with the PC development update for Halo Infinite. These Inside Infinite updates have been coming out every last Thursday of every month. This time we're talking about the PC gaming side of things. I'm super excited about this because I will be planning to play this on PC. And as a PC gamer myself, I have a lot of interest in seeing what 343 is going to do to try to please the PC player base while also integrating with the console side of things. So if you guys like these news and informational kind of videos, make sure you tap that like button. Let me know you want to see some more content like this. If you want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo as it ramp up to the release of Halo Infinite, make sure you tap subscribe. Let's get right into the content here. There were also some amazing new screenshots I want to share with you guys as well from this blog update. Also front and center here, you have a picture of a brute, which you take a look at this broody boy. He's getting a little bit of a goatee there, so I'm giving more of that classic brute look to them, which is fantastic. Where in the previous gameplay screenshot reveals, they didn't have any facial hair, so this is more classic brute style that we're looking at right here as well. Another really cool thing to check out here, guys, that this is the classic Guardian design. If you probably remember from the map, Epitaph from Halo 3, this is like a direct copy from that into this game. Which is very interesting to see how this can be like an ancient guardian and maybe the guardians we've seen in Halo 5 are much more modern or something. Very interesting uh, design choice here to see what the differences are going to be because if you guys don't know in Halo 3 there actually was supposed to be a guardian battle and they used this model as a battle scene, but that ended up being cut content. In this blog update, they put a big emphasis on the ultra wide formats are gonna have true support within this game. If you kind of zoom in right here, you can see how large this image is or how wide it is because if you zoom in right here on the campaign in progress, it says it's in 32 by nine format. So an ultra wide screen view right here. And so you can get a nice wide shot of everything happening in your screen right here. So just one thing I wanted to point out that there really isn't like a whole lot to point out, but just like showcasing the different kind of grunts that are here and the jackals that are here as well. Uh, one thing I kind of noticed within the screenshot though, is that all the grunts are in the exact same animation stance, if that makes sense. So you can see right here, like this grunt right here, this grunt right here, kind of like the exact same animation stance this one right here as well, and this one as well. This one back here, a little bit different because he's walking forward. I don't know if it's just a coincidence or something like that, but seeing that makes it seem a little less natural, kind of almost like we saw back in the old like CE days when it came to uh, character posing and things like that. But other than that, there really isn't a whole lot else to look at when it comes to this section. So one thing I do have, definitely want to point out is the classic yet modern art style with these forerunner structures. This looks very familiar to like a combat evolved area because it's very intricate like we've seen with the more modern Halo games, but this also is very bold and simplified, kind of like the classic styles as well. A lot less of the uh, neon lighting everywhere. It's very more reminiscent of the classic versions that we know of the Forerunner structures, which is great to see. I've always been more a fan of the classic Forerunner style, but this looks fantastic. On this screenshot, they want to just kind of showcase the comparison between like 68 FOV, which they say is default, and 120 FOV, which is ultra wide, or wider than people usually like to play, honestly. And you can see the comparisons between the 16 by 9 widescreen, the extra widescreen, and then the ultra widescreen, and how the screenshot with the ultra wise, it really just kind of expands the horizontal point of view rather than the vertical. So looking fantastic. Okay, so here's that same screenshot again, but in ultra wide, and you're probably thinking, okay, that's cool, but whatever. This is very interesting because if you look on the far right over here, you see this grunt. This grunt was teased in a toy reveal as well. This grunt's kind of supposed to be like a heavy arms carrier kind of guy who's going to be carrying weapons on the battlefield for your enemies. It looks like he has like a plasma grenade that's stuck to the back of the backpack thing that he has so you can maybe grab weapons from the back of him or the uh, banish could use it from him. Uh, so it's cool to see that that toy reveal is now actually going to be in the game as well. Totally new functionality to the grunts, which is very interesting. And over on the left side here, you can get a really good shot of one of the new jackals right here. This jackal just looks amazing. Really cool thing I wanted to point out is just the reflections of the shield color on the ground and on the jackal themselves. 
I remember correctly, there really wasn't much in the way of reflections from the shields onto the characters, but this is much more prominent than it's ever been in Halo, making that lighting much more realistic and something that's just more interactive with the environment. So it's super cool to see. Another interesting thing from the screenshot I want to point out is the redesign for the sidekick. You can see the profile is very different than what we had previously. And this has been confirmed by Sketch and Unishack on Twitter that it's been redesigned to be more Halo-like rather than kind of looking like a Call of Duty sidearm, to be honest. A couple things that were pretty interesting within this picture. Now, this is most likely the same screenshot of the Forerunner pillar that we saw previously in the last development update, but I think just at a different angle. But there are a couple things I wanted to point out here. Is one, you can see down below, it looks like some kind of like a vehicle of some sort or like a shade turret or something like that of a banished guy right there i haven't seen that one yet until now and also up here you can kind of see some kind of like red dot with some kind of illumination and some stuff up here i have a feeling this is probably what you'll be seeing for like audio logs and things like that so maybe seeing these red lights or some kind of like these lighting indicators that we've seen in previous screenshots maybe some kind of indication of like audio logs or some kind of hidden special thing you can pick up in the world because this would totally be some place where you would need to do some extra exploration you know kind of a little off the beaten path kind of thing to find some extra little goodies within the world which is this world of halo infinite is going to be completely packed with that kind of stuff and they mentioned that in this development update as well here's another angle of that same pillar again again this is kind of like some of that previous development update that we had uh, I think it's more just kind of like the side angle that we have where the previous one over here is more kind of like an above angle of the same pillar. Okay, so let's get down to some of the details here within this development update. Now we saw all the pretty pictures. Let's go into some of the actual news. That's kind of what's expected, but they did mention here that they, for example, honoring those high-end PCs is creating ultra graphic pre preset qualities so that the best PC hardware can make the game look amazing and offer incredible PC experience. So this paragraph right here is probably one of the biggest paragraphs within the entire blog update. Now this paragraph reads, for enthusiast features and customizability, that's quite the word, we have a very good ultra wide and super ultra wide support triple key binds we're supporting a wide range of input devices you can play the game on pc using a non-xbox controller or with mouse and keyboard when you're playing on console advanced sensitivity and acceleration sliders for mouse there's so much we're working on and we have plenty of ideas for features after the initial launch as well. To make the game cross-platform, we have to go through great pains to ensure we can have a competitive experience on any device so things like your field of view settings, which are more standard on PC, are also available on console. There are some screenshots of some in-game UI experiences for the different options that you have for PC as well. You have field of view, obviously, but then you also have display adapters. So you can choose what monitor you want to showcase on as well. Your resolution scaling, your minimum frame rate, and your maximum frame rate can be locked in as well in this game, which is going to be fantastic. Because as someone who streams, I don't want my PC to work harder than it to and I need, need to save a little bit of that PC power to be able to stream so be able to lock my frames at like 60 or 120 or even 144 would be fantastic. Here are some of the video quality options like anti-aliasing, texture filtering, texture quality, geometry quality, reflections, depth of field, shadow quality, as well as dynamic lighting. Here's an example of the triple key bindings that they mentioned earlier in the blog update. Now keep in mind, you also will be able to fully remap your controller in Halo Infinite as well. This was a PC feature that's now brought over to the console side of things, which is gonna be fantastic. A really great feature, which I've never really seen before on PC, which was actually present in Halo 5 on console, was the ability to have dynamic scale resolution to maintain frame rate and competitiveness what they state right here. What this sounds like is that you will be able to possibly, you know, set your minimum frame rate, set your maximum frame rate and your resolution. But if you want to maintain your frame rates between there, it might dumb down your resolution just so they can maintain a smooth experience, which is fantastic. Now, a big issue that's been coming around with Halo since it's been released to PC since 2019 is the controller versus mouse and keyboard and how to balance those two out. It's pretty difficult because 
you don't want aim assist on your mouse and keyboard because that's kind of overpowered, but you also need aim assist on controllers and also the way they kind of tune the game in bullet magnetism. It seems like they're kind of trying to maybe divide up the input devices rather than the platforms. Similar kind of what we're doing right now with the MCC. Talking about it right here, I'll just read this paragraph because it just it's short and sweet and right to the point saying social plays and custom matches are all open. You can play on any platform and any device with anyone you like. For ranked matches, we plan to restrict competitive playlists based on input type, not console versus PC. That's because we believe the input is the biggest differentiator in gameplay ability with things like aim assist on controller or precision of sniping on mouse. You can play with a controller on PC, you play ranked with your console friends or even mouse and keyboard on your console and play with your ranked PC friends. Ultimately, I think that's the right move to make. I think with social, just leave it open. It's social, it's whatever. But if you're trying to go for ranks and trying to rank up well, guys, you definitely want to make sure it's a very balanced experience and also just limiting off to just mouse and keyboard versus mouse and keyboard and controller versus controller is really the only the best way I think to go about doing it. Because the differences between the two input devices is so great that you want to have it true to the experience that you want for those input devices, but they just don't really mesh well against each other. Other games have been having this issue between mouse and keyboard and controller as well. So ultimately, I think it's just best to just not deal with it and try to balance it out. And I think just kind of divide up the two. Plus, it's going to be free to play. So there's going to be plenty of people playing with both input devices. Talking about sweating it up in some ranked modes, it's been confirmed that True Skill 2 ranking system is going to be coming back for Halo Infinite. That's the same system that's currently right now in Halo 5. Now, I'm sure some people might kind of cringe at hearing that, with hearing about the matchmaking system when it comes to Halo 5, but honestly, Halo 5's matchmaking system is pretty fair. I think it's rather social, but yet competitive at the same time, unlike current Call of Duties, which has been swept fast the entire time. I think right now, if you're playing Halo 5 and you're trying to rank up, you might come across some you know unbalanced lobbies because there's just not enough people playing at that time, probably in that playlist. I think True Skill 2 ranking system will work out quite well with the large population that we will have for Halo Infinite. And they go into some anti-cheat, as we do know that cheating is very possible on PC, and I haven't really noticed a whole lot in MCC. It's a little bit there, but really negligible. Obviously, with crossplay, people can play on console and PC, you can't really have cheaters on there. They do mention that they specifically tailored the slip space engine with this in mind making it much more difficult for the never-ending arms race of developers blocking cheaters and cheaters finding new ways to cheat. And to end off this blog update, Joseph Stange hops in as he always does and doesn't really say much, but he says one thing in particular, saying that they plan to show some gameplay this summer of Halo Infinite, most likely at E3 in June. Now this is kind of expected, but it's good to know that it's actually in the works. So if you guys like these news and informational videos or missed any content from me recently, check out the videos on the screen right here. Got a link to all my news and informational videos right there. So thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out.